Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy sealed products and singles directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Killian Ink Duelist deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 2 mana 2 2 legendary human warlock with lifelink and menace, saying spells we cast that target a creature cost 2 generic mana less to cast. So that both applies to enchantment auras targeting our creatures to enhance them, as well as to removal spells targeting opposing creatures to kill them. So we've got a mix of both in the deck. And then taking a look at the few creatures in the deck, they're mostly here to enhance Killian, because for the most part we want to play Killian, protect him, and put a bunch of enchantments on him, because Menace and Lifelink are great keywords to take advantage of once we start increasing its power. So at one mana we've got the Alsaid of Life's Bounty, which can be sacrificed to give protection of the color of our choice, and then we also have Dauntless Bodyguard and Selfless Savior, which can be sacrificed to give a creature indestructible, so these are here to protect our Killian. Then Giant Killer is basically a 3 mana instant speed removal spell, which will only cost a single white with Killian in play to destroy target creature with power 4 or greater, and then we can still play the 1 mana creature afterwards. And Esper Sentinel, great at punishing control strategies, as it will draw cards when the opponent tries to cast a non-creature spells, unless they pay the tax equal to the Sentinel's power, so increasing its power with various enchantments can also be beneficial. Then at 2 mana there's Core Spirit Dancer and Sram Senior Edificer, which reward us for playing Enchantment Auras, as they'll get to draw a card. And in the case of Core Spirit Dancer, it also gets plus 2 plus 2 for each aura attached to it, so sometimes we want to put a bunch of enchantments on the Spirit Dancer instead of Killian. Then there's a Thunderous Orator, which is a 2-2 with Vigilance, that can pick up additional keywords on other creatures we control when it attacks, so that applies to Flying, First Strike, Double Strike, Death Touch, Indestructible, Lifelink, Menace and Trample, so works very nicely alongside Killian with Lifelink and Menace. Then General's Enforcer is a 2-3 making legendary humans we control have indestructible, so that applies to Killian, and for 4 mana we can exile a card from a graveyard, and if it's a creature we get to make a 1-1 token. And 3 mana there's Heliot's Pilgrim, which can search up any enchantment aura when it enters a battlefield. Guardian of Faith is great at protecting our team from sweeper effects, as it can phase out all our creatures, and that also means we get to keep all plus 1 counters and enchantment auras that may be attached to our creatures, which can sometimes be awkward if we give one of our creatures protection, and the protection causes all the enchantments to fall off if it has the corresponding color. Then we've got Catilda Donhard Martyr from Crimson Vow, which scales with the number of enchantments in play, has flying and lifelink and protection from vampires, and we can also disturb it out of the graveyard in the form of an enchantment aura, so that can also potentially go on Killian. We've got Lurus, which can recur some of the cheaper permanents from our graveyard, so great with some of our 1 and 2 mana creatures, but can also get back some of the enchantments out of our graveyard. And then sometimes it could also be worth it to let Killian go to the graveyard instead of the command zone, so we can replay it for 2 mana as opposed to having to pay the commander tax. And then at 4 mana there's Halvar, God of Battle, which if we play it as a creature could give Killian double strike as long as it's enchanted, and then Sword of the Realm's also quite powerful. Then going over the non-creature spells, which make up the bulk of the deck here, you'll see plenty of ways to protect Killian, make it indestructible, give it hexproof for protection, and then we'll have lots of removal spells as well, which can take advantage of Killian's discount, and then some enchantment auras to make him bigger. So at one mana there's Fidus 1, to give a human and a non-human plus one plus one and indestructible until end of turn, God's Willing for protection and Scry 1, Karmetra's Blessing can give plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn, and if the creature is enchanted, it also gains Hexproof and Indestructible. We've got Sheltering Light giving Indestructible and letting us cry one. Source to Plowshare is just an efficient removal spell, even though it doesn't take advantage of the discount on Killian. Then Bloodchief's Thirst is fine at 1 mana, and can take advantage of the Killian discount if we kick it. Thoughtseize as Discard can maybe take away a counter spell or some other removal that the opponent might have in hand. And Erebos's Intervention as an X spell also scales nicely with a 2 mana discount from Killian. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit more protection between Adamant Will, giving plus 2 plus 2 and Indestructible, will only cost a single white with a Killian out. Same goes for Beaming Defiance, giving plus 2 plus 2 and Hexproof. We've got Feet of Resistance, adding a plus 1 counter and giving protection. And then we've got Sajiri Shelter, which can be a land or can give protection. And Valor Stance could also make indestructible or destroy a creature with toughness 4 or greater. So plenty of protection here, as you can see. Couple enchantments with all that glitters, giving plus 1 plus 1 for each artifact and or enchantment we control. Angelic Gift gives flying as well as drawing a card. 
We've got Heliot's Punishment as a removal spell that will remove all abilities on the enchanted creature for several turns. We've got Spectral Steel giving plus two plus two. And then Feed the Swarm as removal that can deal with both creatures and enchantments, can easily make up for the life loss thanks to Killion's lifelink. Then Heartless Act as removal. Now two mana removal spells aren't really taking full advantage of Killion's discount, but sometimes you want to play these on turn two, take care of the opponent's commander, and then play Killion a little bit later while we can keep up those protection spells. Then Myers Grasp has great synergy with some of our two mana creatures, like Core Spirit Dancer and Stram, and can also be recurred with Lurus out of the graveyard to give a creature minus three minus three. Arcane Signet still quite useful as we can develop our mana and then play Killian once we have protection available. Io Vecna can draw extra cards at the cost of two life. We've got Tome of Legends, which also plays well with a cheap commander that can come into play and start attacking to accumulate extra card advantage. Then Bounding Gold and Enchantment Aura that can act as removal, can remove all activated abilities as well. We've got Face of Divinity giving plus two plus two, and as long as the creature has another aura attached to it, it also gains First Strike and Lifelink. Light of Promise is very synergistic, saying whenever we gain life, we get to put that many plus one plus one counters on this creature. Inscription of Ruin is quite flexible as a spell with Kicker. We can use it to destroy target creature with mana value three or less for just a single blank with Killian out, can make the opponent discard two cards, and we can also return target creature card with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. So once again, sometimes we might let Killian go to the graveyard instead of the command zone, so we can get it back with Inscription, and with Kicker we can choose all three modes. Demonic Embrace will give plus three plus one and flying, We've got Phyrexian Arena to draw extra cards at the cost of one life each turn, Mortify to destroy a creature or enchantment at instant speed, and Expanded Anatomy will only cost one mana to put two plus one counters on a creature and give it Vigilance until end of turn. Then we get to some of the bigger enchantments. Candlelight Vigil gives plus three plus two and Vigilance for just two mana with Killian. We've got Commanding Presence giving plus two plus two and First Strike, and if our creature connects we get to make a 1-1 one -one token. Fates Feathers has another removal spell that also gains for life when it enters. On Sarah's Wings giving plus one plus one, Flying, Vigilance and Lifelink. We've got Baleful Mastery, which can exile a creature or a planeswalker. E to Extinction does the same and also lets us take a look at the top card and potentially put it into our graveyard. Price of Fame can destroy a creature and then Surveil 2. We've got Hagar Mauling, which can be a land or a removal spell. And then Silver Quill Command, also quite flexible. As long as we target a creature to give it plus three plus three and flying until end of turn, we'll get the Killian discount. And then we can also make the opponent sacrifice a creature, or we can draw a card at the cost of one life, or we can return a creature with mana value two or less from our graveyard to the battlefield. Then Cosmos Elixir got a small boost with Alchemy, now letting us cry one in addition to gaining two life. But for the most part, we want to use it as a card draw engine. And then at 5 mana, there's a Knightly Valor giving plus 2 plus 2 and Vigilance, and making a 2 2 Knight token in the process. We've got Angelic Reward giving plus 3 plus 3 and Flying. Yogmod's File Offering can also be cast at a discount, destroying a creature or planeswalker and getting one back from the graveyard. And Closing Statement can destroy a creature or planeswalker, as well as giving us a plus 1 plus 1 counter. And then topping off our curve, we've got Immortal Sun, which can shut down all Planeswalkers as we're not playing any ourselves, give our team plus one plus one, give our spells a nice discount and draw extra cards each turn. We've got Bolas the Citadel, which can provide a ton of card advantage at the cost of some life, which we can easily spend thanks to the lifelink on Killian. And Celestial Mantle is a ton of fun once we get it going, giving the enchanted creature plus three plus three, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we get to double our life total. And then we've got Grind to Dust, can cast Grind for just a single black with Killian out to put a minus one minus one counter on each of up to two target creatures. And then Dust can be cast out of the graveyard, exiling any number of target creatures that have minus one minus one counters on them. So in total, we can spend three mana to basically exile two creatures, which is not a bad deal. And then going over the mana base, only 36 lands since our curve is relatively low, plus we get all the mana discounts from Killian. And then we've got a couple mana sinks with Castle Ardenvale making extra 1-1 tokens and Castle Lockthwain to draw extra cards at the cost of a little bit of life. And then a ton of dual lands to fix our mana. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play facing Nethroi, Apex of Death, so some sort of reanimator deck. And my hands... okay. A lot of tap lands, unfortunately, so not the smoothest start. But I'll try it.
And then I probably name black and look for a white land, which we have more of in the deck, or I can name white because that's the color I actually need next turn. And then bottom the spell here. Soul Warden's fine. Alright, so would have been able to play Killian on black, but was probably gonna wait for the protection anyway, so this turn I'll say the plus Fable Passage looks fine. And then next turn, Kilion, keep up the Alsates and Karametra's Blessing. And then we can start pulling ahead with Tome of Legends as our card draw engine. Let's play our tomb. And then attack for two. And then I can draw end of turn, keep a protection as opposed to going for anatomy, which I can do next turn. Could also intervention the Soul Warden at instant speed. Dina's fine. And Allegiance Landing. So they seem to have a heavy life gain theme as well. Which does make sense. Nethroid does have lifelink. Okay. So probably fine to untap. On the off chance they have a Sword Supply shares here. And then next up... Could expand at anatomy, might want to draw with tome first to see what's up. Ooh, a celestial mantle. And then for now, anatomy. Which also gives vigilance so we can block. And then I might exile some creatures end of turn with my removal. A Johnny Strength of the Pride resolves. Definitely want to deal with the Soul Warden before the token enters the battlefield. Yeah, let's kill Dina and Swords of Soul Warden. Does mean shields down on uh, protection briefly. Which could be bad for me, but doesn't look like they had any removal. And then now seems like a great opportunity to go for Celestial Mantle. And maybe even a Light of Promise if we want to go all in. Although I might not have enough white mana to make that work. So we'll stick to the Celestial Mantle, although I suppose this only triggers if I damage the opponents. So maybe I'm better off Light of Promising if I want to kill a Johnny here. And then might as well draw first. Yeah, can play this one too. Opponent has to block with both creatures if they want to keep a Johnny alive, they don't. Now the protection from Alsate could still be a little awkward if our opponent has like a white removal spell because then my two auras would also fall off. That's how it works. But we still have Karmetra's Blessing, opponent just casting Nethroi without mutating. That's fine. And I'll take three. And Celestial Mantle should be fun here. So we gain 15, double our life total, we're at 100. 
And uh, Killian now an 80-80. Pretty big. Two ways to protect him, which is hopefully enough. Soren giving the team lifelink. And a bossery. So yeah, if you want to build a life gain deck and you can't fit all the sweet life gain cards in a mono white deck or a green white deck, then Nethroi for Absam might not be a bad idea. Bonon gets back Dina. And they get to make a token. I'll take it. Lots of triggers. And now if I give Killian protection from black, they won't be able to block with Dina, and Menace should guarantee a kill here. So that does it. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and only one land's probably not keepable, facing Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. So maybe a mono blue mill deck. This is better. A lot of removal, maybe even too much. Um, but yeah, I'll try it. And then probably fine to play Bodyguard on one, since a blue deck is not going to have ways to destroy Killian. So the Bodyguard's ability not actually super relevant. But they could easily have a lot of bound spells, which also means that having a ton of auras to put on Killian's not that beneficial. Alright, so ton of removal available, and we've got our early pressure going. Stram could be nice. Let's attack. And it's probably gonna see a bounce spell soon. I think I want double black. Play Sram, and then we still have Heartless Act available here. Alright, so that gets countered, unsurprisingly. But the advantage of a two mana commander is that you can sometimes play it before the counter spells come down. A replicating ring. Okay. So we'll get in for four once again. And then, if Chase makes an appearance, we can Baleful Mastery it. Could also just untap and Bloodsheaf's Thirst to keep Mastery for later. Which is also reasonable. Although if they have some sort of counter spell, maybe I want to do this now. Opponent with a Pact of Negation to protect Jace. Fair enough. Glad I went with a removal end of turn. And then now all Thirsts. And since we're targeting a Planeswalker instead of a creature, we don't get the discount. Your victory. It's just an illusion. Would have been funny if Mortified destroyed artifacts as well, because then we could have made it so they can't pay for the Pact and actually lose the game. Right, Price of Fame or Removal. Yeah, not a matchup to draw a ton of creature removal, but I guess our opponent's already at 7, so can't complain. Time Warp to take an extra turn. Luckily, no Planeswalker in play. Also explains why they were so eager to cast that Pact of Negation, because they had a Time Warp to take advantage of. And a Whelming Wave is going to reset my board, sadly. And yeah, that punishes me quite a bit for only having a single white, as it's going to be harder to redeploy my hand. But so be it. Try 
Transmutation, I don't have a great answer to. Get in for one. They might have to counter the bodyguard here. God Eternal Kefnet's not gonna stick around for long. So I'm gonna put a stop on upkeep. And then I think I Heartless Act now, opponent's likely to counter, and then I upkeep Price of Fame to Surveil. Killian lost his ability, so we don't get a discount anymore. And there's a Memory Lapse. And then upkeep. Could also, I guess, cast a Giant Killer. But I would rather spend my white man on the orator. And then don't need Heartless Act, I'll keep the planes. And then if they replay Kefnet at some point I can giant killer it instead. Always have the option of using Mortify on Transmutation but not a priority right now. Alright, Rivers Rebuke, so they used both of their mass bound spells now, but now with the extra white mana it's going to be easier to redeploy my hand at least. Ooh, opponent actually gets the extra mana from Replicating Ring. Haven't seen that very often. But yeah, that could make a huge difference here. Six mana Jace. Gets to draw. Kefnet we can answer, plus we would have Menace anyway. Baral for two mana, leaving a bunch of mana still. Alright, so if I kill a creature, technically I have lethal. So let me start with Grasp on Baral. which gets unwound. So now I probably kill something else. Let's say Giant Killer Kefnets. And then... opponent still gets to untap their land, so if they have instant speed interaction, they could still get there. Baral gets to loot. Don't think I want to cast Silver Quill Command into open mana. So I'll just attack, we might see a bounce spell, and then we'll uh, have to reevaluate. Ethereal Grasp my Killion. Okay, so Orator still has Menace if he attacks. This is a sorcery, sadly. So this goes face, and then I probably bound in gold on Jace. Right, opponent's got unsubstantiate to bounce Orator as well. Alright, so now I think I still replay Orator, because then next turn we can kill with Silver Quill Command, as opposed to shutting down Jace for the extra card draw. But it's a close decision. So 
So they can replay Kefnet, which we can answer in a multitude of ways. Grind to dusts would also be a pretty clean answer. Opponent rewinds, okay, that's fine. So they've got one card left. Baral can loot. Arch can draw. So they've got four mana remaining. That all happens. Okay, they got rid of a Fading Hope, which means that whatever they have in hand is better than Fading Hope. So I don't think Silver Quill Command's likely to get there. I can maybe bait out some sort of uh, counter spell. If that's what they have instead of a Bound spell, and then Silver Quill Command can get there. I guess I can uh, Bound in Gold's Kefnet then. And then Silver Quill Command's would still be lethal. And hope they tap out to counter Bounding Golds, which they almost did. Baral can loot again. Alright, two mana. Hopefully command's good enough. Put in discarded land, which is promising. And then now Pump Orator and the other mode doesn't matter too much since we still have Menace. So I guess we'll uh, make the opponent sacrifice a creature. And hope for the best. And our opponent explodes! Oof, what a close game here. The extra mana from Replicating Ring came in very big, and we got there using every last spell. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing a niv which can have access to quite a few counter spells and removals, so having both Beaming Defiance and Feet of Resistance for protection is going to be important. Asper Sentinel also quite good in this matchup. So traditionally could be a tough matchup, but our hands, not bad. So one of the main challenges is going to be resolving our key cards. Doesn't look like they have one mana removal, at least. Electromancer for the mana discount. And, uh... Don't want to tap out for Killian just yet, so probably play Enforcer here. Untap. And I could attack, and then if they block I can still cast a pump spell. Might be worth it, actually. And then Feet of Resistance will keep a counter on the Sentinel, so they have to keep paying that tax. And then next turn I can kill Leon, keep up Beaming Defiance if I want. Okay. Start by attacking. And this should be relatively safe. Malevolent Hermit can counter some of my non-creature spells. So probably don't want to go for Candlelight Vigil here. But I could play a Heliod's Pilgrim, although then, if they have removal, they could counter the Beaming Defiance with Hermits for just one mana. So, kind of an annoying card. I might have to play something into it. I guess for now Enforcer also gives us a bit of protection. Okay. 
Alrighty. So if I play a Vigil now on Killion, then I can pay for the Hermit if they sacrifice it. Although I might just let it go to the graveyard here instead. So I can keep up Author of Protection. Ah, that resolved. In which case, Killion and Enforcer can attack. Reign of Revelation gets to draw a card. So that Reliquary Tower, kind of awkward with their commander. So Colorless lands have a pretty high cost in a deck playing Niv. Also could have considered putting the Vigil on Sentinel instead to make them pay even more mana. Burgi resolves. And Shrine the draw. Okay. So I could play Pilgrim, maybe get a Myers Grasp, which could kill Hermit for just one mana to get it out of the way, or we could go for Burgi, which might be more threatening. So I guess we'll start there. Get a Grasp. And then now I don't have to worry about Hermit anymore. Could have tried to get more value by playing Sram first, but really wanted to get this Hermit out of the way. And yeah, looks like our opponent has seen enough. Let's take a peek at the Foretold card. And Alrun's Epiphany, despite the nerf, is still heavily played. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand facing Samut, Voice of Descent. So we can play an early Sram, maybe follow it up with a Myers Grasp to kill a creature and draw a card. As a Soul Warden makes an appearance. So... We'll see here if we need to Myers Grasp Soul Warden or something else. Currently don't have a way to protect Killian in hand. Probably going to wait a little bit until we do. And if the opponent removes Shram, then Killian is a little bit more likely to stick around. Alright, Lightning Helix kills Shram. Catilda we cannot currently cast as it's double white. And then I can still Myers Grasp Soul Warden or use the Intervention. I guess we'll Myers Grasp and then save Intervention for later. So we're shields down on Killion. Opponent passes with three mana available. Okay, so this name's White. And then I can untap it to play Catilda, so I'm not going to play any enchantments on Killian into 3 open mana. Just get in for 2. Can still cast Intervention at instant speed to give minus 2, minus 2. Opponent's got nothing. The Celeste is the play. So I can also start putting enchantments on Catilda instead of Killian to kind of diversify my threats a little bit. Thought Seize is perfect, can have a look, make sure the coast is clear, and then we can move in. Alright, so no removal to be worried about. Song of Freilies doesn't do much without creatures in play. Don't really care about a Jani, so... Yeah, not the most threatening hand. 
procession could be good alongside finale but if we just take finale they don't have any token makers left so that's probably the pick and then now probably fine to play knightly valor on killian also grows Catilda. Opponent goes for procession. Play vigil on Cotilda, I suppose. And attack. So their opponent's taking 12 here. Got plenty of instant speed removal available to answer Samut. And we can start drawing with Castle. Essika's Chariot will make two tokens thanks to Anointed Procession, so kind of undoing the alchemy fix. But uh, opponent's still pretty dead here. I can kill one of the tokens end of turn, and then Manus and Flying will guarantee that we can attack for lethal. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Riel the Everwise. My hand is missing a way to protect Killian. Guardian of Faith a little slow. So I think I gotta take a mulligan here. Still missing protection, but probably can't afford to mulligan again here. So I'll try it. And then turn to Orator, maybe turn 3 Killian, we'll see. As per Sentinels, great. Could also decide to play Sword of the Realms as a pseudo-protection spell once we equip it onto Killian. So kind of like that idea. Play Sentinel, play Sword. And uh, if they play Riel next turn, I could still go Killian into a 2-mana Baleful Mastery. The opponent probably wants to cast their 1 mana instant here, it's just a cycling card that doesn't require attacks. Alright, so no real just yet. Opponent has to pay the sentinel tax, which they can't, so we get to draw. And Signet, so probably go kill on equip. Also boosts up the orator here. Of course, cycling cards quite synergistic with Riel's ability. And now if they kill our commander, we can put it back in our hand at least. Plenty of answers for the opponent's commander. So we're not in a bad spot. Castle Lockthwain, also a good backup plan once we start running low on cards. Drakehaven's quite powerful though. Can start generating 2-2 two -two drakes whenever they cycle and pay the 1. Oh nice, Sheltering Light for protection makes me feel a lot safer. Now opponent is playing blue so there are still bound spells to potentially worry about. But for now, probably go Signets, then I can play an ult that glitters and keep up sheltering lights. I think I still boost Killian over Esper Sentinel, but that's a close call. And I can also Baleful Mastery Riel if she does make an appearance. And then putting a lot of power on the Menace creature makes it more difficult for the opponent to jump with Drakehaven tokens as well, although the orator could have achieved the same, and our opponent packs it in. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Nissa of Shadowed Bows, and my hand's decent. Don't have a protection spell, but a thought cease to check if the coast is clear. And no early removal to be worried about, that's good. 
Um, so do I want to take a beanstalk that can ramp them? Probably. And God's Willing's perfect, so they've got a small window to find removal for Killian, otherwise he's going to take over. Alright, looks like we're good to go. And that's me. Face of Divinity. Hit for six. And that's a pretty quick clock. And then Immortal Sun, also a great answer to Nissa, of course. More protection is always helpful. Could use one more aura to put on Killian. Ooh, Binding, okay. I wonder if they go for Face of Divinity instead of Killian here, but it's too tempting to go for Killian. And then probably better off keeping Blessing, which covers more removal, I think, than God's Willing. And name Black is fine, or green, doesn't matter. And do I want a Beaming Defiance? Not really. And I guess a Scry also reason to go for God's Willing first. I guess upside of God's Willing is the protection maybe helping us get past an opposing creature. Vile Offering... That seems pretty good. Can kill Augur, get back a Beanstalk Giant. Get him for six. And now we've got Lethal next turn. That Sprout's not gonna work. All right, and that should do it. So, very quick kill here and a perfect execution by Killian, showing what the deck is capable of. So, yeah, we got to see the deck in action, played some grindy games, some very quick games, and uh, everywhere in between. So, if you're into playing these kind of aura strategies and like killing creatures, then uh, Killian Brawl might be the deck for you. So, that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.